Hello everyone, thank you for watching Snack Chats, and we are going to be talking about our first impressions of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Some of you may be wondering, is this a good game or a bad game? It's terrible. For me personally, any Pokemon game that does have HMs is automatically a good game. This is kind of a much different Pokemon game this time around, especially with more of the setting and locations and theming. How they treat Pokemon more like a legit sporting event this time around. Yeah, it makes me feel more like Pokemon's actually becoming legitimized, like it's not just a fad for kids, like it's actually being seen as a world-renowned thing like soccer or football. Everyone knows it. There was references in Fuller House. Uh, interesting note that I noticed throughout the game is that there's a lot more brands this time around, like in-game universe brands. It sort of reminds me of Splatoon, like every outfit you get is made by a certain company and you can work for certain other companies like restaurants or libraries, etc, etc. Sponsors. Yep. That we could have on our video. <laughs> Talking about theming, what did you think of the story this time around and some of the characters that they introduced for it? No spoilers, especially since, like, I only got up to the third badge so far, but so far it's bland. This is a very story-like game. Although, at the beginning, they did sort of, like, hype it up to be like, yes, you're gonna be the next champion of this new competition. Basically, you're the chosen one type of a story. By what I can tell, that could change and do a full 180. Oh, hello, Leon. You've been undefeated before? Not anymore. A ten-year-old walks up to you and destroys your entire career. I mean, it's not as bad as, like, going up to Team Rocket and then just dismantles a whole crime organization like the Mafia. Yeah, the biggest reason why this game didn't really have that much of a big grand story, at least so far, is because everyone complained that Sun and Moon, there was too much focus on the story, which I don't really agree with. I did like the fact that Sun and Moon did try to go for a much more grand, more RPG-esque story. I honestly didn't see Sun and Moon as a actual story based game I saw more as that like I don't correlate these things with story but the thing is is that great characters everyone remembers Team Skull no one cares about Team Galactic there was a lot of notable characters especially ones that we meet at the very beginning that have like full character arcs like Lily. Yeah, and not only that, it's like the Pokemon designs are also like my favorite. Like this whole Hawaiian slash wild circus designs. Like that is something I feel we're never gonna get again because they already tackled it in this generation, but I just wish they did it more. Back on the topic of stories real quick. It is sort of a running theme with Pokemon. Pokemon games, where we'll have a really story heavy one followed by a really story light one. Like we had Black and White, which was very story heavy, then we had X and Y, barely any story. Then Sun and Moon, which was really story heavy, and now we're at Sword and Shield, which is very light on story. Yeah, but the thing is, is that like it's a Pokemon game, it's like how Although, with Mario, you're not going into Mario for the story, you're going in to go wahoo everywhere. To be fair, I've seen people complain about how you can't skip the cutscenes in Sword and Shield, I'm like, oh, yes, like, the one-minute cutscenes? <laughs> I waited longer to, for just what what type of... What's a game that takes, like, two minutes to load? Any Switch port? <laughs> yeah, I, I waited longer for that than the cutscenes in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Just set your tech speed to fast. <laughs> uh, other than that, just the gameplay is really the focus, and that's what I make this generation of Pokemon the most fun because it's basically Pokemon Breath of the Wild edition. I do feel like they did focus a lot more on gameplay and just make it more competitive focused. I do know that there's a whole controversy with the Pokedex, but personal speculation wise, I do think the big reason why they did cut a lot of the roster was to balance it out more for the competitive players because there's tons of Pokemon with tons of unique abilities and tons of unique moves. I feel like a lot of Pokemon that went on the chopping block just happened so we can, you know, make it more balanced out because Pokemon has become like a big competitive thing. I remember watching streamers last year whose connections were getting dropped while they were streaming because Twitch was going crazy over the Pokemon finals. Not only that, like, I just realized 
I've heard this from people who go competitive in Pokemon, that Gen 5, which was black and white for some people only go by the anime, is when they started to, like, actually balance out the competitive scene. Like, Diamond and Pearl was when they actually started getting competitive, but black and white Gen 5 was actually where they were really there. Uh, as such, there's a lot of Pokemon from Gen 5, and then Gen 6 was also the balance out gen 5 so but we got a lot of gen 5 pokemon i am curious uh how do you think dynamaxing or gigamaxing affects the gameplay i think it's another fad but the thing is is that they do try and mix the best of both mega evolution and z moves I'm just not a fan of how Gigamaxing is only specific for Pokemon that already have it. Like, if I have a Pokemon that has a Gigamax form, I can't Gigamax it unless I actually find one that can Gigamax. And Gigamax is a really annoying word to say over and over again. And then, <laughs> like, Dynamaxing, like, I forget what word. Uh, oh yeah, I kept on, like, when I first heard it, I kept on mixing it up with Betamax. <laughs> What's Betamax? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess talking about Pokemon and going over the dex cut, did your favorite Pokemon make it? No. Pig Knight is my personal favorite for just looks reasons. And Yeah, none you know, of the starters made it. Yeah, none of the starters made it. My hope that they start adding some more. And I know Tepig is, I mean not Tepig, um, Pig Knight is like not everyone's favorite, but I do want it. I'm sad to say that my favorite Pokemon, Jigglypuff, did not make it, but fucking Clefairy did. That fucking cunt. That fucking clunt. I mean, seriously, Jigglypuff is a staple for the anime. Jigglypuff is the original Smash Bros representative what the heck nintendo i mean not nintendo but i'm not even gonna <laughs> point fingers it's whatever since our favorites didn't make it what's your favorite new pokemon i like the roly coly line because like you know i like my dragon type pokemon that are like a bit on the chonky side but the thing is is that we only got like the roly coly line I guess for me, one of my favorite Pokemon so far was Appleton. He's just a big boy and I want to give him pats on the head. Pat, pat. Yeah. Also, uh, another one of our favorites, we both have him on our team, is Alacream. I say I have that just mainly because there's a special rainbow version. You know, I don't really like fairy type Pokemon for the aesthetic reasons, but- Hey, I had to spin the control stick counterclockwise at sunset for 45 seconds to get you that rainbow Alacream, and you will be grateful. I am grateful. When I traded that with you, you're like, oh, it's perfect. I love it so much. I'm gonna pull it on my team. Because it's a rainbow. <laughs> and we gay. Talking about weird evolutions, your mask was like a crazy evolution. Thank God for people who do like evolution tutorials on YouTube, because I would have no idea how to evolve him. You pretty much had to give him 49% damage and then go to a specific area in the wildlands in order to evolve him. And like, how how was I supposed to figure that out myself? Other than that, I actually randomly came up on a shiny yum mask today. Yeah, like right before we were recording, Joey was like, I want to play a bit of Pokemon Sword and Shield. And then he was like, hey, is this a shiny? And I'm like, yes, it is. And then I'm just like, oh, okay. Hopefully I'm not too over leveled to kill this thing in one shot. <laughs> And mind you, I did catch it, but I worried so much because I almost one-shotted it. But regardless, I now have a shiny, and I know I'm not the only one. Because people that I talk to, they randomly come up on, like, shiny Pokemon as well, when that's never been the case in my lifetime, other than, for some reason, I got a shiny Torchic in a Sapphire game, and a whole hullabaloo. I was so young, I thought my game was broken, so I restarted the call. Console, but what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> i guess for final thoughts 
for me. I'm not a huge Pokemon fan. The first like mainline game I played was Black and White. I skipped over X and Y and then played Sun and Moon. So for me, even though the game was light on story, there's a lot of fun to be had with this one. The Wildlands are such an interesting addition. They make a lot of great gameplay tweaks, and I do think this is a good stepping stone for what they can do in the future. I just hope though that they give them like a few years. We don't need a Pokemon game every year. I think we can wait like two or three for the next one. My sentiments exactly, and I'm just like, I don't know, so far I see this as the best generation gameplay wise. It's rough around the edges, but it's still a fun experience overall. It's like how everyone loves Breath of the Wild, but everyone also says that there could be more added on to it with how open it is. So I say the same for Pokemon Sword and Shield, where it can be greatly added on to. Do you think that they're gonna make like a third definitive edition? Like an emerald or a platinum? I don't think so. I think they're going to refine the idea depending on how much profit it makes because that's how they're deciding for the future of Zelda games. Yeah, ever since Black and White and Black and White 2, they sort of dropped the whole third definitive edition. I would also like to say that um, I come from a long line of like my first ever owned game is Pokemon Blue, Red, and Yellow, even though I mainly played Blue because Blue. Do you think that if we do get a remake of, I think the next game's up for remakes is Diamond and Pearl, do you think they'll go with a similar style of Sword and Shield, maybe try to incorporate the wild areas and stuff like that? They might, but that might be too big of a drastic change because getting older generation people would probably want it more loyal to the older generation just in a 3D style because Mind you, they're still going to be purists that want the whole older gameplay to be left untapped. Yeah, that's a good point. But you never know. I mean, Let's Go was a remake of the very first few games, and they drastically sort of changed the formula, I which carried over to Sword and Shield. That does make the whole, like, divide tricky, if they're going to keep the divide into, like, thirds, mm -hmm. which meaning, like, are they going to keep that line? of remakes that started with Leaf Green, then they made Heart Gold, and then they made Omega Ruby. Are they gonna just continue that one, or are they gonna fully reset again with the Let's Go Pikachu line and go up again? I do feel like Sword and Shield is sort of like an amalgamation of like the best ideas from the past few games, just light on story. Although, if you guys do play Sword and Shield and feel sort of disappointed with the lack of story, I do recommend and World of Final Fantasy, which is sort of a collect them all Pokemon style game, and that's heavy on story. Yeah, basically you can't really have it all. <laughs> you either get a lot of story, or you get a lot of gameplay. You either have to choose, and let's be fairly honest, a lot of people grew up with the hype of Pokemon from the anime, not the actual game itself. If we didn't have the anime, I wouldn't have even begged my parents to get the game. I mean, for me growing up, I never played any of the core games. It was mostly just the anime, the toys, and the console games. I never owned a core game, but I did own the stadium games, and trying to beat the story in those were super hard. I hear ya. Tried to beat the Elite Four with level 5 rental Pokemon, dipshit. <laughs> With me, I started with Pokemon Blue, and, and I didn't even know how to read. Basically, my parents, like, told me, oh, that's Bubble. I guess before we sign off, one last thought, Chairman Rose is a himbo, and he totally has the dad outfit. He's just missing the socks with sandals. For me, um, is Dragon Knight in the game? I do not know. If Dragon Knight's not in the game, then add him. <laughs> add Dragon Knight 2020. Let's make this a movement, sign a petition. Also, hashtag add Jigglypuff 2020. Yeah, that is really a crime because that Pokemon is more of a staple. Anyway, you guys have a good night, good morning, whatever. Please like, subscribe, comment, anything helps. And thank you again for watching Snack Chats. Don't forget to catch them all on